Our next topic is about the fossil form and function and in which we will be discussing about the evolution and development. We know there are two different concepts, the evolution and development. Evolution is how the organism developed from the simpler life forms to a complex life form. While in the development, an organism develops from a single cell zygote to a complete embryo. Right? So these are how these two different concepts are related to each other. And one of them is called ontogeny and other one is phylogeny. Ontogeny is related to the development and phylogeny is related to the developmental history. So biology, uh, biologists have long sought a link between ontogeny, which is development and phylogeny, which is evolutionary history. So that means there is link and we will be discussing about that. In 1866, uh, there was a scientist, a German evolutionist named as Ernst Haeckel. Ernst Haeckel announced his biogenetic law that says that ontogeny recapitulates the phylogeny. So that means the whatever developing uh, development is doing, when a cell develops from a zygote into a complete organism, it has some stages which are somehow showing its evolutionary history. And that was a very, you know, idea pertaining to the observation of those scientists because the scientists were able to see the different organisms in different larval stages, in different uh, developmental stages. And with that, they were able to see that the organism do have some of the structures which are vestige or which were present in their evolutionary history, but they are not present in the adult organisms. And that gave rise to the uh, relationship between the ontogeny, which is study of the development, and phylogeny, which is study of the evolutionary history. And in the biogenetic law, the Ernst Haeckel's idea was that the sequence of embryonic stages may make the past evolutionary history of an animal. For example, uh, let's talk about the human fetus or human uh, unborn baby. Uh, they, uh, the human unborn baby has a tail. We don't have the tail. The adult uh, or the new, even neonates don't have the tail. So where does the tails go? And that also means that the tail was present in our evolutionary history. Some of our ancestors did have the tail. So, and there comes another scientist, uh, Von Boyer, and the Von Boyer's law he gave, and the, it says that a parallel between the sequence of development and cladogram uh, in the human is existing. So that means if you see the cladogram, uh, we did uh, uh, discuss about the cladistics, and if you remember that the uh, in the cladogram, the first comes the chordates and then the vertebrates and in the vertebrates, then there are some tetrapods and this sort of thing. So uh, the organisms are having their uh, uh, apomorphies, right? So or uh, synapomorphies. So he says that the, if we can draw a parallel between the development or the developmental stages of an embryo and a cladogram, right? So in human development, embryo passes through major nodes of the cladogram of vertebrates. And what are those major nodes? Uh, the synapomorphies of vertebrates appear first, and then the tetrapods, and then those of amniotes, and then those of mammals, of primates, and then the homo sapiens lost. Synapomorphies are the characteristics which are shared by one or more uh, clads. So, you know, these are the characteristics. For example, the tetrapods is a characteristic that uh, the four uh, limbs that is shared by the birds, mammals, uh, reptiles, and amphibians. So this is a synapomorphy. This is, you know, giving rise to a clad, clad tetrapod. And the, the next thing is the development and phylogeny. What are the different aspects of a phylogeny which are uh, shedding some light on the development? The developmental aspects, there are some things which are present in the development and that also give rise to the science of phylogeny that there is some relationship. 
Uh, one of them is atavism, vestigial structures, and pattern of development. So these are the three aspects, and we will be discussing these one by one. So what are the uh, atavism? Uh, the atavism are certain developmental abnormalities or atavism that are, are throwbacks. That means these are the former stages of evolution, such as uh, human babies with the small tails are excessive here. So if you see the uh, human babies, they in their developmental stages may have small tails are excessive hairs and these are called atavism. And you can see a diagram in which you can see the hint of ancestry in the modern animals. The normal horse leg is on the left side and extra toe is on the right side. And that extra toe is an atavism. And the vestigial hip girdle and hind limb of the whale, the rudimentary limb is the rudiment of the hind limb that functioned 50 million years ago. Now, there are some uh, developmental genes which are also involved. In uh, The developmental genes are the genes which are present in an organism. And these are responsible for the growth stages of an organism during developmental, uh, uh, during developmental growth. Now, these genes are conserved across the animal kingdom and all across the, all the organisms. So, these are widely shared among the organisms and they are determining the aspects of form, symmetry, anterior-posterior anterior orientation and limb differentiation. And, and the developmental genes are, were first, uh, you know, discovered a long time ago. But uh, there were some major research in 1980s and a whole field was developed which is called evolutionary development. So there is evolution and development and the, the study is studied under the evolutionary developmental biology. And in that uh, developmental genes, the most famous developmental genes are homeobox genes. So then there are the vestigial organs. Vestigial organs are those organs which are not present in our body, but uh, which are present even after the birth, they are present in our body. For example, the appendix is a vestigial organ, which is, you know, may have other functions in our ancestors, but now it is just there. It is, it has no known function or maybe uh, some scientists say that it is responsible for the production of vitamin K in our intestines. And then there are the patterns of the growth. The patterns of growth are also present and these are also conserved. And these patterns are also uh, telling us that if one clad is related to the other clad in the evolutionary history.